welcome guys thank you for listening to the first um conscious podcast i have my guest here chad who works on colorado gator farm is that correct correct yes no worries so could you tell me what it is that made you want to work with these animals in the first place please um yeah absolutely uh so i've always loved reptiles reptiles have always been something that has been a bit of a passion for me uh, which is actually really ironic because my dad absolutely despises reptiles and wanted us having nothing to do with them yeah um but I think a, a big thing for me is when we were younger, uh, we would go over to my grandparents' house and uh, they had all the, the big fancy channels. They had a little bit more money than we did. Um, and so one of the big things that we would end up turning on would be like uh, the crocodile hunter. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I would watch uh, Steve Irwin go out and, and interact with these animals. And it was just always fascinating with to, to me and and i really grew to respect and love the the animals um then as uh i got older you know I, i've handled snakes pretty much all my life um caught wild snakes um handled people's pets uh so I, i've always grown up around snakes and uh lizards and, and other smaller um, much less dangerous uh, reptiles. And then, uh, yeah, it's always been a fascination. Just always really wanted the, the hands-on experience with them to, to get to know them and to, to be around them. Yeah, sounds awesome. I think Steve Owen was a big inspiration for most hepatologists like you and myself, um, it definitely had an impact on the industry. That's 100%. I don't think, I believe a lot of us wouldn't be so fascinated with these animals if it wasn't for his timing on Animal Planet or other shells he's been on, 100% for sure. So what, what species of snakes did you handle when growing up? What did you catch? Um, so mostly uh, water snakes. Um, I grew up out in, in Utah. Um, and a lot of the opportunities I had when I was younger, uh, were just the small water snakes. Um, as I've gotten older, I've, uh, caught some, some bigger rat snakes. Um, I usually don't go out and, and try and mess with like venomous snakes uh, when I'm out on my own. Um, I'm, I'm smart enough to, to realize that if I'm on my own and I'm out there, uh, trying to mess around with something venomous that's going to end up uh, not working out well for me. Um, but you usually just smaller water snakes, uh, rat snakes, constrictors. Yeah, awesome, nice. Those water snakes that they don't not venomous, right? Correct. Correct. They'll yeah. give you a little bit of a nasty bite. They've got a bit of a temper on them, but they're not venomous. Yeah, no worries. I don't know much too much about <clears throat> American snakes. Obviously, everyone knows what a rail snake is because. We have them here in zoos in Australia. Um, I'm more common with um, Australian snakes because I, I study mostly crocodilians and then sometimes Aussie snakes, but not as much as I study crocodilians. So, yeah, it yeah. sounds awesome. So, um, <clears throat> so my question for you, what would you say is um, like just general American public's relationship with wildlife um, and also predominantly like their relationship with American alligators? Like, what do you think they're – views are on um, conservation like for most animals including american alligators um i think this is a, a very difficult question to answer in a general sense um just because i know there's a lot of different views especially right the second out here in america for conservation and for animals in general so not, not trying to bring a whole lot of politics into anything, um, but when you get into kind of like the, the left side of the political spectrum, um, I've noticed that there's a lot more of a, you know, we, we shouldn't be hunting these animals at all, leave them alone, let uh, nature stay with nature type of a deal. 
and then when you get more to the right side, lots more of the the hunting aspect and the, um, you know, we're carnivores, therefore we should be eating the animals. Um, and then you got everybody in between. Yeah. And the big thing that I've noticed is regardless of which side of the argument you're on, whether it's, you know, don't touch the animals at all, animals have rights, um, no hunting whatsoever, or the you know, hunt everything type of deal. One common thing that I've, I've heard from, you know, friends that I have on both sides is that this is their way to, to respect uh, nature and respect the animals. Yep. Um, whether it is, you know, leave them alone or whether it is hunt them. Um, they, they definitely, you know, th this is our way of respecting nature. This is our way of, uh, wanting to show our appreciation yep. um when it comes to the american alligator um in general though i would have to say most americans tend to fear it uh hollywood has produced a number of movies throughout the years um lake placid crawl alligator one and two um, and with these movies, you know, they, they don't want a, a, uh, a, a placid docile alligator, mm. right? They don't want an alligator that's going to run away from, from people. They want an alligator who is going to be aggressive. Um, they, they want a, a crocodile that's going to be aggressive. And I think a lot of these Hollywood movies have really shaped American minds to to fear uh, the alligator. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, when I first started working with with alligators, um, there was uh, an attempt I made to feed a larger alligator. We were doing a, a uh, demonstration yep. uh, with with the alligator for the public. Let them kind of see how uh, the alligator eats since most people in Colorado don't get that opportunity. And uh, we had a, a bit of an accident. The uh, alligator charged me um, and I, I nearly got bit real bad. Um, and I know that that video of that just went viral. And I made the mistake of going in and looking at some of the comments because I was curious. And a lot of people just were, you know, the, these guys are monsters. These guys are, are killers. Why are you guys messing with them? You're so stupid. These things mm -hmm. are just out to kill you. And so I, I definitely think there's a huge uh, outlook from, from America where it's just, you know, these, these animals aren't necessarily – understood and with the way that hollywood has turned them into the the monsters people are just sitting here going well you know the they're, they're killers they're out to to get everyone and the honest truth is they're not yeah i completely agree with you that's that's the same thing right there fortunately with the four hour crocodiles well we have the freshwater crocodile but we have the saltwater crocodile which is much much bigger um a lot of people are scared of this animal which is understandable, like is a quite a evolved ambush predator. But at the same time, um, we have this this uh, mentality, especially in Queensland, Australia, where the people believe there needs to be a cold for these animals. But the problem is that we only have the Queensland population of saltwater crocodiles is only twenty thousand to thirty thousand, which is quite small. Um, and obviously, these numbers are still uh, recovering from the nineteen forty five to nineteen seventy hunting. Well, uh, then after it stopped, so you know it's they're recovering. Population is small, but then all the territory, which is like right next to Queensland, there's a hundred thousand plus solid crocodiles, which is just amazing. And they have a good <clears throat> crocodile management plan. They don't go around <clears throat> culling them as such as much as Queenslanders have this whole ambition, this whole thing the media throw in there that we must kill these animals, you know, to have more waterways over to people and so on. So. It's unfortunate people believe um, that's the right thing when it's not the right thing. With it. You know, Obviously, people like you and me believe that these animals should just be left alone in the first place, and which is completely true, then 
no harm will be done that way. <laughs> so, Absolutely. yeah. Yeah, so um, I was looking at your Colorado Gator Farm page and you guys have, I believe, either leucistic alligators or albino American alligators, a pair. Yeah, so we've got uh, three albinos. Oh, awesome. Amazing. So how did... How rare is it for it to be albino alligator? Do you know? Um, so the number I have heard, and I haven't gone in and done extensive research uh, Yeah. to see how accurate, um, but the number I've heard is there's less than, th I want to say 300 Wow. um, in the world. Wow. And do they breed at your facility or they come somewhere else? Um, so we have tried to breed them in the past. Um, so when they first came to the the park, and and this was before my time uh, working there, um, so I'm I'm going off of the stories that I've heard. Um, but my understanding is before they came to the park, uh, their living conditions uh, were not necessarily the best. Okay. Um, and so there is a chance that the animals maybe just aren't capable at this point in time of uh, breeding and producing viable eggs. Um, we are currently uh, have them on a bit of a diet with the hope that maybe if we can uh, reduce the weight on them a little bit, that maybe that'll help uh, reverse that effect a little bit. Yeah, awesome. I oh, sound they look, they look actually beautiful. Look at them today. I was like, wow, they look so cool. Yeah. I know in Australia we have like a one or two, one leucistic crocodile, Australia Zoo. And then there was like a, like a, a large male crocodile that had like a, <clears throat> almost like a, like a yellowish tone, gold tone towards skin at Crocosaurus Cove, Northern Territory. But I don't think it's there anymore. Yeah, that, that's Okay. what I know of in Australia. So, um, <clears throat> what feed do you currently feed your American alligators? Sorry, say that one more time. What what food do you currently give them? Yeah, so um, with uh, the uh, alligator farms uh, throughout uh, Louisiana, Texas, um, Mississippi, um, a lot of those farms that do... Uh, raise these animals uh, to be harvested for for meat and for uh, their hide. Uh, there's companies that have produced what's called gator chow. Um, it it's almost looks like dog food. It, it's a uh, fish that's just been uh, put put into this little little chow type nugget. Okay, yeah. Um, and that'll make up about sixty seventy percent of their diet. Um. As we've opened up the uh, facility to to the public, the public can come in and and feed that to them. You know, just toss it over the fence for them, Yep. um, and that ends up making up the majority of their feed. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, people throughout the the valley here in Colorado that will uh, donate meat that is um, expired, that's no longer good for us, that's still good for the animals. Um, so we'll go in and feed them that. Um, I know that in the past, uh, roadkill has been donated. Um, we have people who will just randomly show up with some stuff that we're able to, to feed off, uh, chicken, um, pork, beef type of a deal. Yeah, awesome. Well, it's pretty amazing that your people are keen to actually donate food to your animals. That's a really good thing to have. Yeah. Sounds like it's really, like, really... Yeah, What were you saying, the, sorry? the valley the, that we live in is very, very, um, really, really helpful to each other. And we Yeah. really try to, to be there for each other. So the, the valley um, definitely rallies around and, and helps out where they can. Yeah, that's awesome. It sounds really amazing. Yeah, so... um. <clears throat> So going to um, the laws around like interfering with wildlife, especially American alligators, found that in Florida it is a third degree felony to potentially injure, kill, possess, or capture an alligator. The maximum the maximum penalty is up to five years in prison or five thousand dollars in fines or both. Yeah, so um, unfortunately, uh, American alligators have been bought and sold as as pets throughout the United States for years. Yeah. Um, even back when they were endangered in the the 
70s and, and 80s, uh, they were still bought and sold as pets for a long, long time. They're still being sold as, as pets now. So the laws throughout the, the country really differ from area to area to area. Yep. So places where alligators are naturally found, Florida, Louisiana, Texas, uh, the Carolinas, Georgia, uh, we do tend to see laws where, you know, just leave the alligators alone. You don't need to be feeding the alligators, don't need to be messing with the alligators. And if you're caught doing so, uh, there, there's penalties. Yeah. Um, I know in, I think it was South Carolina, I saw a slogan, once a fed alligator is a dead alligator. Right, okay. Um, just because they start to lose that natural fear. And once they start to lose that natural fear, then they really do become that that threat to, to human life. And at that point in time, you know, what What else is the government going to do if an alligator is constantly uh, trying to, to go after someone? Uh, here in Colorado, uh, it was legal to have an alligator as a pet until about six years ago. Um, and it was actually my facility that really pushed for Colorado to change its laws so that it was no longer legal to buy and sell gators as pets. So in order to uh, have the animals, in order to facilitate the animals, there's uh, permits that you have to go through and have. Um, I don't recall exactly what the penalty is for illegally possessing an alligator in Colorado. Um, but I do know that if you are wanting to do that, you've got to have permits. You've got to pay the 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 uh, fines and and uh, go through all the the paperwork for it. Our facility was built on a uh, natural hot springs. Yeah. Um, that is eighty seven degrees year round, which is why our animals are allowed to to thrive in this environment. Um, it started off as a tilapia farm back in the 70s because of that hot springs. And then the gator showed up in the uh, late 80s. And we just found that the animals absolutely thrived here, did really, really well. And from there, it's just been a sanctuary where people's pets have been brought to us. Uh, people mm-hmm. who can't take care of them anymore, laws have changed. The population of, of alligators has to, <clears throat> sorry, Population of alligators has risen to 5 million since um, hunting stopped, which is pretty crazy, which is an amazing su- success story for them. But Absolutely. Compared to Australian crocodiles, we are nearly don't even have a million crocodiles in Australia. So, yeah, which is crazy how um, evolved American alligators actually are to be able to do that. So do you, guys, do you guys have much um, in research information about how what made these animals recover so well after nearly being hunted to extinction? Um, again, I haven't gone out and done a lot of the leg work research myself. Yeah. Um, but based on what I have been told by individuals who have gone out and done the research, what actually ended up helping the American alligator out, believe it or not, were the farms in the South who were breeding them for meat and for their hide. Okay. Um, there were just facilities, like I said, Louisiana, Florida, Texas, uh, Mississippi, where they would just breed and raise you know, hundreds of alligators for skins and meat. Um, and then they would just, slowly release some over the years and that's actually my understanding of what helped the american alligator uh recover was just the simple fact that that was such a huge deal throughout the the 70s and and early 80s uh that that population was able to to recover yeah well it's crazy because i know the fact that like a solid baby saltwood crocodile they have one percent chance of growing to an adult from when they're an egg which is probably the same thing for the American alligator. It correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, no, is, that's exactly right. Yeah, so like it's obviously because, <clears throat> but people that don't know, it was because of um predators, which is the main thing, and floods, cyclones, which can affect nests. Um, so yeah, which is really hard for the American alligator or salt crocodile to go to an adult, obviously because they have so many things that have to go through being through hatching to to juvenile to sub adult to adult. That obviously a lot of people don't think, but they do have to go through 
So I think it's an amazing, amazing idea that these farms actually helped these American alligators by breeding them in their facilities and actually releasing them, which is a thing they could, could do in Australia, but don't think is actually 100% legal to do that now, unfortunately. But it would be actually help population a lot if we done the exact same thing, which we can do because there's plenty of farms in, in Queensland, there's crocodile farms in the territory as well. So, yeah, that could really help us. Yeah, absolutely. So going to the crocodile that was on the TV spot with Steve Owen, I uh, mean the I mean, the alligator. What's his name? Morris. Morris. How how big is Morris? Oh gosh, Morris is probably it's definitely somewhere between about ten to eleven foot. <laughs> My guess would probably be closer to the ten foot size. Yep. Um, probably between four and five hundred pounds. Yeah. Wow. Well, so he's um, what's what's his temperament like? Is he quite a placid alligator? Oh, he, no, he he is an extremely aggressive animal. Really? Um, as much as yeah, like I I I get in his enclosure pretty much every single day that I work. Um, <laughs> I've worked with him very very uh closely. Yep. Uh, since working there, um, and he he knows who I am. I mean, he's a highly intelligent animal. All all crocodilians are highly intelligent. He knows exactly who he who I am. He knows I'm not in there trying to to mess with him. A lot of times, I'm I'm working on his habitat or just checking, making sure everything's okay. Um, that that is an alligator I have grown very very close to. Um, and as much as I love him, he wants nothing to do with me in reality. Uh, he he is a a between 60 and 70 years old so he should be slowing down he should be um he, he should not be nearly as aggressive as he is but unfortunately when he was working in hollywood throughout the uh, gosh 70s 80s um 90s uh they like, like we were saying you know hollywood doesn't want a, a docile placid alligator they don't want something that's just going to sit there and and not react to anything yeah and so when uh they got him and they started putting him in the movies they would sit there and poke and prod his tail to make him react All right, sure. and as a re result um even today he's very very sensitive about his tail you you touch his tail and he'll whip around and, and go right at you yeah well um so he he's very very aggressive very territorial um does not like people in his his enclosure does not like uh when we have to go in and work on things and do maintenance um yeah he he's lunged at me many many times uh he's he's gone after just about everyone who enters into to that enclosure um if you're doing uh, some sort of maintenance on the fencing or around the fencing, he'll lunge at the fencing and try and get at you. So just, he's a beautiful animal and just, yeah. I absolutely love him, but he is very, very aggressive just because they wanted an aggressive monster on their movies. Yeah. I was also not, I was just in that TV spot today. with Steve Owen. They looked quite, quite relaxed actually in that TV spot, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, Steve yeah. Irwin always had yeah. that, that connection with animals. Yeah. Though. Animals that were just super aggressive towards other people were just always great around him. Yeah. And, you know, one thing with the, that we tell people when they come in and look at our, our animals at our facility is, you know, alligators just really all have their own personality. Yeah. Right? There are some alligators. So we, we've got one there that's named Gatorade. And <laughs> she she's probably pushing four to five foot. Yeah, wow. And the truth is, I can take my hand and run my hand around her entire snout and she's not going to bite me. That's amazing. Right? I can put her face right up next to my face. She's fine with it. She's not going to bite me. She's not going to try anything. I, I can sit there and play with her and, and get right up in her face and she's fine with it. Yeah, well. We have other gators like Morris or um, I'm trying to think of some of the other. We have one that's named the Duke. The Duke does not like me at all. Every time I've handled him, I've been bitten. Um, Morris, very aggressive, very much uh, going to to try and, and get whoever's at his enclosure. So they all have their own personalities. They all have their own uh, way of, of dealing with things. And some of them like some people, others don't like others, you know. Yeah.
Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, so you have other species there at the, at the park. You've also got nile crocodiles. Uh, what species of caiman do you have at the park? Uh, so we have Oh, I'm sorry. dwarf, uh, dwarf caiman and spectacled caiman. Awesome. So, what's what's their um, what's their behaviors like when you're working with them? Um, they tend to be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, th th they, they are almost on par sometimes with some of the crocodiles. Uh, they, they do tend to be a little bit more aggressive, uh, much more flexible than the alligator is. Um, I've only dealt with them truly like dealt with them outside of, you know, uh, feeding a few times and they are just very wildly, very strong. Um, I, I, I've, we've got one that's very, very timid. And when I try to feed him, like he just is explosive. Um, just trying to, to, cause he, he sees himself being attacked. Um, we're not sure if some of the other animals were picking on him before we pulled him out of the, the general population, kind of put him on to his own. But I mean, I'll, I'll sit there and try to, to get him to eat something. And he just is very explosive. Yeah, Um, awesome. very much on par, I would say, with with some of the crocodiles that I've worked with. And how many how many Nile crocodiles do you have at the the farm? We have uh, two of them. Is uh, were they males or females? Uh, we have one male, one female. Um, yeah, both around ten foot in length. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, what are they? What do they like to work with? Um. They are, we, we've been working really hard with them to try and calm them down. And uh, from when they first came to the farm, which I want to say was about 15, 20 years ago, I think is what I was told. Like, again, before my time working with them. Um, they, they were a lot more aggressive, a lot more explosive than they are now. And they're still very aggressive, very explosive. Um. we make sure that whenever we go in their enclosure that we have somebody who's very experienced with them going in no matter what. So uh, there's somebody who knows what they're doing with them. Um, we make sure we enter it in with pairs so that there's always that backup just in case. Um, and we found that our, our female is uh, a little bit more ex uh, explosive than the male. At least that's been my experience from what I've seen. Do you, so, are you guys are you guys gonna breed them, or they they separated? Uh, they, they're in the same enclosure together. Yep. Um, and I've never actually seen eggs with them, which is, is kind of weird now that I'm thinking about it. It's never been something that I've, I've really thought about until you've, you've said that, but I've actually never seen eggs with them. <laughs> okay, awesome. That sounds pretty cool. So, what, what other reptiles and animals do you have at the uh, the farm? Yeah, so um, obviously American alligator is the big one for us. Uh, we do have an American crocodile, um, real real small, real young. Um, I guess it would probably be around two, three years at most in age. Yeah. Um, so here came in. Uh, we have three more Let's crocodiles and a Siamese crocodile. Awesome. And then we have lots and lots of turtles and tortoises. Um, just over the years, it's just been one of those things where, you know, people just bring their pets, right? People buy turtles and tortoises because they think, you know, they're going to be small. They're going to be uh, docile. They're going to be easy to manage. And they just don't realize that, you know, some of these African tortoises are going to live 150, 200 years and they're going to get, you know, 300 pounds. <laughs> And yeah, that's exactly right, so there's, yeah. yeah, there, there's a lot of, a lot of people who just don't do the research when they buy pets Yeah. and just don't really understand what it is that they're getting themselves into. And Yeah. that's where we come in a lot of times is we'll have people who bring in red ear slide turtles. Uh, the cicada tortoise is a big one that gets brought in. Uh, we have received several snakes um, over the years. Uh, we've got several uh, Colombian red tail boas um, and just 
you know, animals like that. Uh, we used to have monitor lizards and uh, uh, reticulated pythons. Um, tragically, we we had a uh, a lot of our animals pass away um, in a fire that burned down one of our buildings. Um, but before that fire, we we had a lot of just really big snakes, some anacondas, reticulated pythons, um, some uh, Asian monitor lizards that, you know, people buy these guys as pets, whether it's legal or <laughs> illegal. And, yeah, like our massive. <laughs> and just, yeah, and just, just don't realize what they're getting themselves into. You don't realize just in, in reality the sheer amount of danger yeah. uh, that they're in because they purchase these these animals thinking, oh, you know, this is exotic. This is cool. I want to show off to my friends. You know, oh, I love reptiles, whatever the case may be. Mm. Um, and then just realize real quick, oh, you know, th th this wasn't a smart move. This wasn't a great idea. You know, we're not capable of taking care of, of the animal the way that it needs to be. Yeah, that's exactly right. Fortunately, in Australia, we have, um, we've got so many restrictions about what animals we can own. I think the most exotic thing you could own in Australia is like a macaw or a, like a Mexican walking fish. That's, yeah. That's literally all you can own over here. Um, so those, go back to those, those no crocodiles and the caimans. Were they people's pets or were they just from another zoo or facility? Um, I don't know about the Nile crocs. Yeah. Um, but I know a lot of the caiman um were were pets at some point in time yeah wow. um, so i i want to say despite the fact that alligators are illegal in colorado i want to say caiman are actually still legal to own as pets wow um and and uh the dwarf caiman and spectacle caiman are really big um with with the exotic pet trade here in the the u.s um, so yeah. I know there's still a handful of states like Pennsylvania where you can still walk into a pet store and buy an alligator without any permits or any documentation whatsoever. It's crazy. Um, but I think the, the Cayman is still quite legal throughout most of the, the states. Every state's kind of got their own law on, on what can and cannot be owned. And so I think the Cayman is still very much... Uh, popular throughout most of the u.s yeah well so do you know how much it costs to buy an alligator or a caiman like a rough rough idea from a pet shop i actually did look this up once but it was <laughs> years and years ago and so i really don't remember off the top of my head um, I, I know that my wife and i went to a, a reptile expo yeah. A few years back in uh, Denver, just for fun to see what was around. Yeah. And I think they had a couple of dwarf came in for like 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Yeah. So that's, that's cheap, man. That's pretty cheap. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in reality, when you, when you look at uh, like some of the, the bald pythons and, and whatnot, and you're looking at like 200 bucks for the pattern or whatnot. Yeah. You know, bucks <laughs> isn't very much in reality. $50 for a Cayman, 200 bucks for a Python. How does that work? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I was looking at the website. It said $160 to $180 for an American alligator. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I mean, nuts. yeah, the, there are some uh, some companies out there that'll sell them to you online and ship them right out to you. What, really? Wow, that's crazy. My, my American alligator can't see front door. <laughs> right. I, I keep telling my wife what we ought to do is get one so I can put it in the front yard and my neighbors will leave me alone. Yeah, exactly she keeps awesome. telling me no. <laughs> oh, God, dog, God, Gator. Right. Yeah. Also, I've, I've been following this page on Facebook. I don't even heard of it. It's called Alligators of Florida. Okay. Yeah. This, yeah. It shows like people's, um, like just alligators just like coming into their front yards and like, People living on like all the front properties and the alligator chilling in the front yard. And it's just um I think it's pretty amazing to see like people's relationship on this Facebook page. Like they they understand like, you know, this animal lives here, he they were here first, and we will respect that, which is what I believe um Australians especially need to adopt. 
with assault with crocodiles, you know, like they were here first. We need to coexist with them. So yeah, which is pretty cool to see that we don't have those kinds of pages on Facebook or anything like that. We don't have people that admirate that admiration for crocodiles in Australia or Australian wildlife in general for a lot of people is very small. Um Yes. a lot of people fear fear wildlife over here. They fear snakes, they fear spiders, they fear crocodiles. And there's this whole myth out there, like, you know, everything in Australia is trying to kill you, which is not true. Like we have a lot of we have a lot of predatory animals. So does America, but it doesn't mean every single animal is trying to kill you. So going on to that, what is it, what is how does it feel for you when like you're doing a job, you're doing talks and going around the park, showing people animals? How does it feel for you when you educate people about these animals and hopefully when they walk out, they have a different um outlook on these animals? How does that feel for you? Um, it's actually been really amazing and, and gratifying. Um, so uh, I am a, a school teacher um, on weekdays and on the weekends I work with these animals. Um, and, you know, I've, I've always had a passion for teaching, always had a passion for, for educating. Um, and it's been really hard being a professional school teacher because a lot of times, you know, people just don't listen, don't want, uh to to understand the the information you're trying to tell them but when i'm at the 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 park and when i'm uh, handling the animals and talking with people it, there's a lot more gratification um that i that i feel there's a lot I, I feel like i'm i'm actually getting through to people a lot more than i am um when i'm actually in a school setting which is very ironic i feel like Uh, but yeah, it's, it's very rewarding to be able to handle the animals and talk to people about them, and especially people who have never been around them before or who have had uh, bad experiences with them before. And I can sit there, you know, you know, this is how we hold them. This is how we handle them. Uh, we'll, we'll pull out the little, you know, like one, two year old alligators and let them touch them and, and get to know them a little bit better. Um, you know, going back to, to that Steve Irwin, right. Uh, He, he once said that if you can touch an animal, feel an animal, then it puts that animal in your heart. Um, and I, I I really feel very strongly about that with, with these animals that you know, a lot of times people fear and Mm. people misunderstand. Um, you know, my, my dad, like I said, was very anti-reptile. He has a, a saying and he continues to say it to this day. The only good snake is a dead snake. Mm. And so it's very rewarding for me to be able to pull out a snake or an alligator or uh, a tortoise or whatever the case may be and be able to talk about it and be able to interact with it and, and help other people uh, understand that they are animals right? mm. and they, they have personalities and they're not out there trying to, to get you. Right. The honest truth is I, I know for like uh, saltwater crocodiles, Nile crocodiles, that the bigger crocodiles, um, there is absolutely those, those man eaters out there. They exist. Right. There's no denying that. That's right. Yeah. But with the American alligator, <laughs> we're not on the menu. Mm. We're, we're not. And, and that is so shocking to people when they find out that, you know, that that 15, 12 foot alligator isn't trying to kill you. It just wants to get away from you, right? It, it doesn't want anything to do f with you. You know, they perceive us to be bigger, even though they're enormous compared to us. But because we stand up and we loom over them, the alligator perceives us to be bigger. And so they they want to get out of our way. They don't want to tangle with us. They don't want to deal with anything that potentially could fight back. Yeah, that's And so exactly we're not right. on the menu for them. That's exactly right. Well, the biggest, the biggest American idol, I believe, was nineteen feet two inches or nineteen feet one. Yeah, so uh, if I remember correctly, the biggest one that has been officially measured was around fifteen feet. Um, Yeah. but there are croc or not crocodiles, sorry, uh, alligators um, back in the eighties that were supposedly much bigger. Um, but the measurements on those were never officially done to the point that. Um, they are officially recognized as being the largest alligators. Yeah.
But yeah, I mean, th- there have always been stories about alligators that have been able to get up to, to 20 feet. Um, and there's some evidence to suggest that's absolutely correct. Um, the honest truth is when you go in and you're hunting these animals like they were in the, the early uh, 1900s, the uh, the 1800s, you know, it's the, the largest species that are the largest specimens that, that get picked off first and they're not allowed to grow to the largest size. So the honest truth is who knows in reality how big these animals once got, how big the, the Nile crocodile, how big the salt water, how big the American alligator truly can can get to just because you know they they were hunted almost to the brink of extinction and now that they're coming back you know maybe we will have that opportunity to to see just how big they can get or maybe unfortunately we've killed off the genes that allow them to get as big as they once were yeah well some people believe in Australia that some people believe that we have to kill, kill off the genes for solar crocodiles to grow to massive sizes, but there is a crocodile in Northern Territory. He's either, some people say he's 19 feet long. Some people say 20 feet long. So 20, about six meters. He's no dominator. He's a very huge, <clears throat> huge male sort of crocodile. And I, was, I, I didn't, I went to Northern Territory this year, earlier this year, to see some crocs. Um, fortunately, I didn't see him because we were at the wrong time to book the tour because of the wet season starting. So it was shut. But I saw Wendell at the Crocosaurus Cove in the territory. He's 18 feet long. So he's quite mm-hmm. a big boy. He had a bull shark bite on his tail, which is pretty cool, which is like a big, like a C, just a big C, which is on my Instagram page. It's wow. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty. He was, he's the biggest crocodile I've ever seen. I was like, wow, that thing is absolutely huge. And the biggest recorded solid crocodile skull, it's like a mandible length, is like 98.3, like 98 centimeters long. He's just his jaws alone. Yeah. Which is massive. And the guy's talking to, he reckons that that croc is about 24 feet to 23 feet long. Which is just yeah, they, crazy. Yeah, they, they can get real big, right? The, yeah. the, the salties, the, the Niles can get really, really, really big. Um, I know the American croc has the potential to to get some, some decent size. And, you know, maybe eventually we, we will get to see some of these really big, animals flourish a little bit more Mm. yeah i hope so too definitely there's a lot of talk right now in australia like around um modern queensland especially around people like interfering with wildlife for instagram likes and tiktok likes i have seen one video of a guy in the everglades like walk up to i'm looking at there's like touch them on the tail and stuff is that like is that a popular thing in america as well like people to do to mess with those animals or not really i i think it's going to be kind of a a person-on-person type uh basis just because you have people like me who are crazy enough to to work with these animals up close and who are uh willing to to honestly risk potential death i mean we we've got a a a 12 and a half foot alligator Yep. And if that guy gets a hold of me while we're doing a, a live feeding or if, uh, you know, I have to do some maintenance on his enclosure. I mean, if he gets a hold of me, I, I'm going to be pretty messed up. Whether he kills me or not is another story. But if he bites me, I'm going to be pretty messed up in reality. Yeah. And so I do think, you know, it takes a, a special kind of crazy to <laughs> to to yeah. really want to be able to uh, work with these animals. And I think when you have them in the wild, either A, you've got that special type of crazy or the special type of stupid, one or the other in reality. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people don't necessarily want to, to deal with the bigger um, animals. Um, I, I've seen, uh, I, I've, you know, I've seen a lot of the, the YouTube videos and a lot of, of, uh, the different videos of people out there messing around with alligators and, and just doing stupid things yeah. in reality. And, you know, the honest truth is an alligator, while it is fairly placid, will defend itself. Yeah. 100%. And they do have their own personalities. Yes. So I, I don't know that it it's a common thing that people are going to go out and, and mess with these animals. But I do know in this day and age of social media, 
you know, people are constantly doing things to try and, and outdo each other and try and have that, that, uh, you know, the most likes or the, the next million view, whatever video. Yeah. And so I do think that the level of people who are willing to risk life and limb, whether they realize they're risking or not, it's another story. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, sheer amount of people who are willing to to do that is increasing just for that. Uh, honestly, it, it's, it's a high to mm-hmm. try and, and get, you know, the, the million views or the, the next viral video. Mm, yeah it's that the dopamine effect in your brain <laughs> that people yeah. are chasing unfortunately <clears throat> yeah well people it's it's unfortunate that people believe that um it's safe to go out go out and mess with these animals um especially like in australia that's why i bring it up because australians have lately a lot of be a lot of be surfacing on the internet of people interfering with freshwater crocodiles and saltwater crocodiles um in northern territory in queensland and these people are lucky that they got lucky they haven't been attacked. But you know, there's always that one person that always you can always make one mistake. Especially if you're just doing it for a laugh for attention. It's just one fatal mistake, and then you can get seriously hurt or killed, which is what yeah. they don't understand. And just that's why conservationists like like myself want to change the laws and change the outlook on these animals, you know, just to, as I said before, just to leave them alone. That's the swiftest thing to say. So I've got some I've got some data here in front of me. So um about in the past 10 years, there's been a total of 131 American alligator attacks. Um and then 118 of those were non-fatal and 13 of those were fatal, unfortunately. So obviously you would obviously say obviously all the safety things around American alligators at your farm or park. So what's what's your opinion on the best way to stay safe when people are fishing or they think they should they want to go for a swim, obviously when they shouldn't want to sell around. But people some people do go for swimming towards the steel. What's your safety talk with these people that think it's okay to go on there in the environment? Um just you know, just be cautious, be aware of what's around you. Um, especially where you know, people in, in, in Florida and Louisiana, where you have the highest alligator populations the truth is just about every body of water that you're going to look at is going to be a potential home for for these animals and with those numbers increasing and with uh the population of alligators doing so well within those two states alone let alone what you're going to find in texas and mississippi and the the carolinas georgia type of deal you know you just got to be cautious about what you're doing uh, there's no reason for you to really approach these animals. Uh, the honest truth is most gators, unless they've been, you know, approached by people in the past and unless they've had interactions with people in the past are just going to want to be left alone. They're not really going to want anything to do with you. Um, they're going to try and go the other way. So if you just leave them alone, more than likely they're going to leave you alone. And yeah. If, if they are approaching you, obviously, you just need to get out of there. Right? There's, there's no reason for you to interact with these animals. Um, there, there's no reason for you to put yourself in, in that, that situation. Mm. Right? I mean, go out and, and do your fishing. Go out and do your camping. Go do your kayaking. Right? There's, there's no reason to not do the things you enjoy. You just got to be aware of what's around you and what's going on. And realize that, you know, there's always going to be that chance that if you decide to, you know, stick around and and interact with these animals that, you know, you're, you're putting yourself at risk. And I think that's the big thing that people don't get sometimes with these animals because they are ambush predators. They are going to move slowly. They are going to, to take their time. They're extremely patient. And I think that's the big thing that a lot of people make the mistake on is, well, you know, it's not moving. It's not uh, acting like a, an aggressive lion might or uh, or like an aggressive snake. And so I think a lot of people do make that mistake. And I think you, know, you got to be aware of what's around you. You got to understand that these are wild animals. They can be unpredictable. 
and that there is that chance. And I think that's the big thing is sometimes I don't think people realize that chance is there. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I, I worked with these animals professionally. I have uh, been trained. I have hands-on experience and I still get bit. I still uh, have, you know, the, uh, what was it? Yeah. Two days ago. Right. So Saturday I was feeding the, the Siamese crocodile. And she came right up out of the water, came right at me and tried to take a bite out of my foot. Mm. Right. So, I mean, there's absolutely, you know, that, that chance. And I think people just have to be aware of it and have to, to realize that, you know, it's there, especially as that population grows, especially as um, I've I've seen uh, research that suggests that their territories are expanding and they're moving into some of these colder States um, in the United States. So, you know, they're, they're going to be there. There's no uh, removing them in reality. They're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. So you just got to to educate yourself. You got to be aware of what's there and just be aware of the potential danger. Okay. You got to respect it. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that. Um, So in those areas where there's obviously where there's alligators, is there a warning signs in those areas or – Warning signs of bite rams or anything like that. Do you have warning signs for American alligators or not really? Yeah, so I know Florida has them. Um, I believe Louisiana has them as well. Yep. Uh, I have seen them in Texas. So they're, they're there. There's always those signs. You know, beware alligators, beware crocodiles, no swimming here type of a deal. Um, I can tell you as a school teacher <laughs> and as someone who has watched so many adults as well who people don't read signs around here they really don't anymore <laughs> i mean I, I i can't tell you how many times i there's a sign that says employees only and you know we have customers going in and out of that it's like that, is, <laughs> that sign right there you see that big yellow sign that says employees <laughs> only don't what what are you doing and <laughs> as as a, a teacher you know I'll, I'll put up uh you know information on the board test on tuesday study hard you know whatever the case might be yeah and they'll show up tuesday we've got a test yet it's been on the board for a month Mm, people don't read signs anymore it's you know people are going to do what people are going to do and i think the the signs are great i think that they uh they they help to educate Mm. And the people who take the time to read them are better off for them. Yeah. But I, I do think that we are getting to a point where people just don't read signs anymore. And people don't care what the, the rules are and what the precautions should be. And, you know, I, I think a lot of it does go back to, to cell phones and tablets and the fact that we're sort of used to having our heads down and, and, and texting all the time and scrolling and whatnot. And I, I do think that we have become less conscious about what's around us. Oh, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely have. That's, that's a, that's a problem. So say it's a bit of a safety problem when you're going to these habitats and you've got your phone on you all the time and you look at your phone and you should be reading the sign. It's not a yeah, real yeah. good thing. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> It's, a lot of people don't know that also America has American crocodiles as well. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people think USA and they think, oh, they only have um, American alligators and that's it. Yep. So American crocodile, um, the amount of tax has in the past 10 years has been 201 in total, 173 non-fatal and 28 fatal. And I do know that the American crocodile population is quite small. Things. 2,000 individuals, which is pretty Correct. sad. Something like that, yeah. But um, they are currently recovering, which is really good. And a lot of people are starting to see them more up in Florida. As those people recently posted on Facebook photos of American crocodiles, where they usually see American alligators, and some of the locals are even surprised. So it's a good thing that these animals are starting to recover. Absolutely. Yeah, so do you, so you only have that small American crocodile on your farm that's right yeah yeah just the one um she is an absolutely beautiful beautiful animal um 
I've actually been able to handle her and interact with her a few times. And she is just an absolute sweetheart, which we're really hoping that, you know, she maintains that, that personality. Yeah. Uh, crocodiles are much more explosive um, in general, much more aggressive uh, than the alligator is. And so we're really hoping that she maintains that, that personality. We, we realize that she's going to get a lot bigger than our alligators, that she has the potential to be a lot more aggressive, a lot more explosive. Um, but right now she's a, she's a real sweetheart, um, real beautiful, beautiful animal. Yeah. Awesome. So do you guys um, also feed the crocodiles, the alligator chow? Or it's different, different uh, we've diet? tried a few times. <laughs> I've seen our, one of our smaller more lets um, eat it before. Yeah. Uh, but we definitely uh, find that they, they prefer their meat to the gator. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, they would hundred percent. I know I learned a good tip from when I've done my crocodile course not to feed crocodiles pilchards. Um, like I don't feed crocodiles oil, too oily fish because the crocodiles can put on weight quick and they can die. Gotcha. So I don't know if that could be a good tip for you or not, but that's um something that I learned to what I picked up during the course because of the fat content is too much for them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know uh I I have been instructed that the more lean the meat is, mm. that's what uh, my boss prefers uh, being fed off to uh, the animals. So if there's a lot of fat in, in the, the meat, uh, he prefers it being cut up to smaller chunks and fed out to a lot of animals versus you know, taking a, a small fatty roast and feeding it to one animal. Yeah. So we do try to make sure that uh, the, the fat is minimized. Um, so chicken and, and turkey are usually a big one that gets uh, fed off. And a, a lot more of the lean stuff uh, will go towards the, uh, the crocodiles who tend to eat a little bit more in reality than the, the alligators do. Yeah, well, it's quite popular, the um, chickens, <clears throat> too fat and crocodiles in Australia, especially in crocodile farms. They predominantly feed them chickens, which is their main diet. Um, well, where I was on a crocodile farm once, the guy fed the guy ch chicken the egg laying hen. It was obviously it was dead. An egg, an egg, um, came fly over its butt. <laughs> <laughs> the croc bit down. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus, crazy. They're like, yeah, that, that happens often. Well, that's pretty awesome. Um, so when when it's winter time where you are, do do, do the pens like the lakes or the ponds or whatever? Um, do they freeze over or not really? No. So, like I said, this was built on a, a geothermic. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah water base so i mean the water itself maintains about an 87 degree temperature year round yeah. so some of our enclosures are warmer than others and we'll make sure we move the animals out of the the enclosures that are furthest away from the spring mm. uh into some that are closer during the winter time yeah. so i mean right now uh it, it's i mean it's been anywhere between about you know, negative five to about 40 degrees um, outside for the last month and a half, two months that I've been going to work. And in the morning, all of the alligators are right up in that water, right in some of the deeper parts of the water where it's a little bit warmer. And by mid-afternoon, they're out sunning themselves and they're doing pretty well in reality. But yeah, I, I mean, we've experienced uh, down where I live, I think negative 14 Fahrenheit is the coldest I've seen it this year. Yeah, And wow. yeah, I, I mean, the water, it, it cools down a little bit, but I mean, it's still extremely warm. There was a, an alligator about a month and a half ago. I mean, it must have been like 10 degrees outside. It, it was it was cold. It was a cold day, wind shear and everything. It was, it was just a bitter day. But we had an alligator that had a bit of a, a nasty cut on it. And so we were sitting here going, okay, how are we going to get this thing? And so we finally just, you know, I took off my shoes and I walked into the water and, and grabbed the animal. You know, had to pull it out, had to take a look at that cut. 
and the water was really, really nice. It wasn't until I got out of the water that I sat there and went, oh, my gosh, what did I just do? This was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's that's such a good spot to have those animals, like in that natural hot springs. Correct, that's what you said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's an awesome spot. No worries. I think we'll wrap that up for now. I really appreciate your time, Chad. Thank you for all the information you shared with us today. Absolutely. Thank you.